So we're here at the CES Unveiled. Hi. Hello. So who Welcome. are you? Hi, my name is Robert DiLoretto, and I run the U.S. operations here for MicroReg, based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So, um, MicroEdge, is that a, a, an OS? You can look at it as an OS. We also compare ourselves with Android. The big difference is that we're 1,000 times smaller than Android. What that means is, for a very, very small bill of material, even a $1 MPU, MCU, you're able to pack as many features on as many of the high-end Linux products. So our whole value proposition is helping design for cost, uh, reduce bill of material, and design very, very quickly. So is an RTOS? Uh, we run on top of an RTOS, so we are a complement to many of the RTOS, or all the RTOS that are out there from free to ThreadX to, uh, to all the others. So you're, you're like a layer on top? Yes, we are. You're like a, an app store? Now that's the highest layer. It's very interesting when you look at companies like Landis and Gear, Smart Meters, and make millions and millions of meters. What we are doing for them, besides being added, closer to the mic. Besides uh, being embedded into a smart meter, uh, what we're providing is a an app store or the ability to write apps in Java, JavaScript, or even Python that are stored in a very secure marketplace, a branded marketplace by, say, Landis and Gear. And we're now able to, or they're able to give their customers the ability to download apps to affect the characterization and affect the feature set um, of, the, uh, of the products. So this goes a long way to future-proofing some of these platforms. And I can draw the same analogy with uh, major customers like Zebra Printers. So they're looking at uh, how can they extend the functionality and features through downloadable apps. So in summary, it's almost like creating and adapting products like this as a smartphone. As a smartphone, revolutionize the apps, uh, marketplaces, we're starting to do that for some of these platforms with the smart meters and your printer category. So it's an app store for the IoT? Correct, app store for the IoT. And uh, this is like uh, totally new, nobody does this? Nobody else is doing something no. like that? That's, uh, it's very, very unique, and it's been interesting working with the customers to understand what their requirements were in assembling this overall ecosystem. So besides me drawing the analogy with, with Android and designing very quickly and bill of material reduction, we're able to really create an overall ecosystem, including the app store, including the apps, and then connectivity, connectivity to the cloud. So if I look at the pictures right here, uh, these devices, uh, there's like a, a coffee machine. So, uh, how would how would the micro edge enable something special for this? Great question. Great question. Because uh, during the show uh, upstairs, beginning on uh, on uh, uh, Tuesday, we're going to be featuring a next generation coffee maker. And what we did was we worked with a customer that. Uh, wanted to understand all the connectivity capabilities that were possible within the coffee maker. So what we did was we replaced the graphical user interface to make it very, very intuitive, easy to use. We in installed the camera, and we also installed intelligence so that you can talk through it through Alexa and say, brew mom's cup of coffee. Mom's cup of coffee has a different grind cycle and a different overall temperature than if you said, uh, brew Robert's coffee. So they're looking at added, adapting coffee makers with added uh, graphic user interfaces, cameras that intelligently know, well, when I say brew some coffee, it'll know that it's a carafe versus a 12 ounce mug, eight ounce mug. And they're starting to collect that information in the cloud to have personalized behavior as far as uh, uh, usability. That sounds awesome, but uh, how, how is it for the coffee maker a good idea to use MicroEdge to, to get this done? Uh, uh, what is it that you need that makes it maybe easier? Uh, well, I, I think being able to design very, very quickly and design for cost. And to say that is everything is done on a virtual device. So on your PC, you're actually able to call up and look at, okay, what do we want the coffee maker to look like? the graphical user interface, 
how do we want it to behave, what are the connectivity options, and then what are some of the connectivity modules we may want to include, like a camera. So you're able to do that very, very quickly and come together as a team with design, uh, graphics, engineering, to make decisions very quickly, fast prototyping, and then go to market very, very uh, fast. Because at one point, uh, Google was trying to do Android things, but that didn't really work out, right? It, it, it did not work out. They uh, they repurposed uh, Android things more towards smart speakers and, and larger uh, products, not smart products on the edge. So they really couldn't fit on some of the smaller MCUs and MPUs. And again, that's the biggest difference here with, uh, with MicroEdge, being able to leverage $1 MCU all the way up to maybe even $15 range. And that's where we're starting to get some overlap with uh, uh, with Android. So we're able to scale up and design very, very quickly. So on ARM Cortex M0 or ARM Cortex M4, what's the smallest one? M3, Cortex M4, M0. M0. Yes. So you get to M0. All the way up to the A7, Cortex A9. That's probably the highest end that, uh, uh, that we would need to work with. How do you compare with like Zephyr, for example? Uh, like the, is, they don't have an app store. They don't do this this kind of. Uh, no, I think they're more of a uh, uh, embedded uh, design environment, uh, more of an engineering centric. Uh, very much, I think they take on projects. We take on programs. Meaning, when I talk about these customers, they're looking at scaling across all millions and millions of devices. So they're and they're looking at building more of an ecosystem. Uh, which we can provide, and not just the design for uh, in better environments. It's a uh, open source. Yes, it is. So, uh, is it? How long has it been around? I, I think I did a video with you in four years ago, right? Yeah, my so, how long has it been happening? Uh, grown very, very quickly. We've been around for the last uh, eight years. Besides raising initial uh, venture capital, uh, we reinvested thirty million dollars into R and D and already have 37 million powered by micro-edge devices in the marketplace today. 37 million, million. devices. Yep. All right. Um, and uh, all the chip makers are partnering with you, I guess? From all SD, the NXPs and everything? Expressive, NXPs, SD, um, Sony. A lot of the wireless modules, too, from uh, Silicon Labs, Sierra Wireless, so all of the uh, BLE, Wi-Fi modules, we're also partnering with them to provide that level of connectivity. Uh, does, it, uh, does it enable a lot of new startups? It, it does, but we're really, our, we're, we're looking at startups within these global organizations, right? You look at a, uh, uh, like Atlantis and Gear again, I'll bring up uh, uh, Zebra Printers. They're trying to reinvent themselves. So we're really creating a startup within some of the established enterprises. Our target market typically isn't just a small startup who wants to build product. It's really targeting organizations that are programmed across millions and millions of devices.